Is that okay if we speak with you guys? Examiner. Disney We're Examiner. Oh, cool. Yeah, how are awesome. you guys doing? Hi, good. Nice Congrats to meet on the nomination. Nice Thank to meet you. you, too. How are you doing? Honored to meet you, sir. Oh, well, thank um, you. Well, both of you guys, because... That's right. I get that. No, right. this guy. This guy. <laughs> I'll tell you. I would... Oh, yeah. That's the one thing. It's like, oh, Eric Goldberg, like, yeah. that guy. That guy. <laughs> I meant it in all love. I meant it in all love, for sure. But you guys are both here for one project. Yes. One project that means a lot to the both of you, and apparently to people who have seen Frozen already, of course, but uh, with Get a Horse. Right. Well, I mean, combining 3D and 2D animation has, of course, been seen through, uh, uh, I think Paperman had some type of elements inside of that, too. But for your guys' film, I mean, you made it obvious. Right. Where, I mean, the 2D, and the 2D animation was, you know, kind of fitted in with telling the story of Mickey actually coming out of the screen and stuff like that. What was the inspiration of wanting to do something different like that? Well, it really came from the director, Lauren McMullen. And she, first of all, has always loved that era of Mickey, that 1928 Mickey when he was first born. He was a little rascally. He could do anything. And and it gave a, an enormous amount of freedom to the animation with rubber hose arms and, you know, turning his leg into a staircase and all that kind of stuff that you could do in that era. Um, and her feeling was, well, how can we get that Mickey right. into today's world? Mm. <laughs> what has to happen? Right, right. <laughs> so, I mean, for you, I mean, bringing that Mickey into today's world, I mean, what what, what kind of significance does that have on an audience? I mean, what's, what's telling a story like Mickey Mouse that's known Yeah, the well, world one, of, one of the things that was really great working on this project was that I really didn't have a whole lot of knowledge of early 1920s, 1930s right. Mickey shorts, and so right. one thing that I did right away was just start, Watch like, watching them. Yeah. Right, exactly. And so I was so excited that we were going to be able to take that sensibility and bring it into today's audience because right. that kind of humor still lives today you know it's still really really fun and uh, it's very whimsical and, and stuff that you kind of can't do sometimes in today's audiences you know and so uh, for me it was just a, a blast and I only work with Eric on this you know and with Lauren um, but it was the challenge of taking that style of animation and, and applying it to modern CG animation right normally computer animation doesn't like doing that no. kind of animation no. You have to do a lot of cheats, and yeah, these to, guys did to beat a it up fantastic a job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For that too, I mean, you always have that argument now that hand-drawn animation will have not won't be the same as CGI, uh, right? Right. Were you trying to make a statement on like subconsciously that I mean the two can be well, you know one? in order for the film to work. He had to be the same Mickey yeah. behind the screen and in front of the screen. Mm -hmm. He had to behave and act and move exactly the same way or no one was going to buy it. Right. So, you know, yeah, I guess we're blurring the line a little yeah. bit. <laughs> well, and one of the great things is that we learned at the studio was that even though we sort of speak different languages, we're saying the same thing. Right. So, like, we had dailies together, the 2D animators and the CG animators together in the same room and just talked animation. Right. Didn't matter if we were talking about 2D or CG. Right. We we were looking at blocking together. We'd show a 2D blocking and a CG blocking together, and we just we were working together, learning it. You know uh, how to get this process to work for this particular short, but it was also sort of like putting on your old favorite gloves because everyone was just like comfortable and like okay you know this is animation yeah. <laughs> you know it wasn't a surprise right. it wasn't like oh this is di it, this is animation right. and so it was it was fun yeah. you know it was comforting I, I felt yeah. me too <laughs> and a new respect for something that's a tale as old as time I mean I mean when, when you're taking in something that uh, is not a lost art form you know right. taking something that audiences I was talking to June Ferre just a couple minutes ago about what this means to her and she's still thinks and I think and I'm sure the rest of the world thinks that animation is going to be here to stay. Yeah, well, and you one know. thing that was great is that we we got to see these friendships form between our 2D and our CG animators, right. which had not happened, I think, at the studio before this time. And we literally would, it was fun, we would be going to lunch and we'd see off in a corner table, one of our, you know, uh, Dale Bear would be having lunch with Andrew Chesworth, which right. is a 2D and CG animator, yeah. just talking animation cool. and, and like, you know, talk, talking about their scenes, but also just talking about stuff that they liked yeah. and stuff that they, you know, found a common uh, uh, interest in, you know, and so the walls were broken. Yes. And now you're celebrating, right, with this achievement. So congrats on that again to the both of you. And yeah, hopefully you guys take home the Annie for, for the short today. There you go. Thank you guys so much. Nice talk to you too. Thank you again. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Thanks guys. I appreciate it. All right.